Do you want to learn how to animate inside of Roblox Studio? Well, if you do, then you're going to want to make sure you watch this video all the way to the end because I'm going to be showing you how to do the actual animating as well as playing it to both a dummy, uh, like a rig inside of your game, and the players in your game. So, let's get right into it. Alright, so, as you just saw at the beginning, I had just created an animation that was just a very brief animation to show you guys what we're going to be doing, and that's, yeah, what we're going to be doing in this video. For the people in my beginner scripting series, don't worry, I will be doing another one of those very soon, so stay tuned for that. Alright, now we are going to go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do for this, um, this is updating a tutorial I made a couple years ago, so uh, before this, um, you would find your plugins tab and from there you would be able to insert uh, insert dummies and find the animation editor but that has all changed um, and it's all moved to this new tab called avatar so click this avatar tab up here by home and model so make sure you click that and you can click the rig builder button here you have a ton of different options for different um, rigs I would like to just choose the block rig r15 and there you go you have your rig right here uh, that we will be able to animate with you can also do r6 by by clicking this if you're making an R6 game, but I'm doing R15. Okay, now to start animating, you're going to click the animation editor. Okay, and you're going to see this new window pop up, and that window means that you're doing everything right so far. What you're going to do next is you're going to click this dummy uh, that you just made, and it says to select a rig. That's what we're going to do. We're going to select this and now give your animation a name. I'm going to call this wave uh, animation. Okay, so we're just gonna make this dummy wave and we're gonna quickly go through this because I wanna spend some time coding it too. Uh, so basically, this is how it's gonna work. You have this timeline right here and this is zero seconds right here and that's one second, okay? So you can drag your little, uh, your thing, your mouse around the uh, timeline to get different parts of the animation. Um, and you can also change the length right here in seconds, so I can make this a three second long animation. I'm gonna put it back to be one second, okay? So, as you can see, we have this one second long animation, and we also can select different parts of our rig. So, I'm going to go ahead and select this right here, and if you're not seeing this rotate button, you're going to want to click the rotate right there. Okay, so, uh, as you can see, let's just go ahead and make something super, super simple. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to want to have a starting position, okay? I'm going to start my rig like that, okay? That's how he's going to start, um, and make sure that you have everything started at zero seconds on the timeline, and you have it in a starting position. Next, you can drag it over to maybe like 0.6 and do the next part of your animation. For this, I'm going to drag it up, I'm going to rotate it this way, and I'm going to click this part of the body. As you can see, you can click different joints, and I can rotate that joint. So as you can see, he's now got his um, arm up and ready for wave, and you can push space to see the animation start playing. Okay, perfect. So it's working just fine. Now you may notice these little diamonds, and these diamonds are called keyframes. Uh, key I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> um, these diamonds are called keyframes, and these keyframes are basically like steps of the animation. As you can see, we this is where we moved the arm to be up in a waving position, so that's this keyframe, and it's at this spot in the animation. You can drag your keyframes around, and when you drag it farther away, it makes him a lot slower, or you can drag it really close, and it's like super fast. Right, so those are all the different ways you can use keyframes. I'm gonna have it at about right here. I think that's good. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and skip over to point 12 and I'm just gonna move his arm up. So I'm gonna make sure that I click this part of his arm right here, that, and I'm gonna move that up right there. And as you can see, now he's moved his arm back up. Now I really want him to go back to this position so we can kind of go back and forth between that. So the way we can do that is just by finding the keyframe we want to we, we want to use again, we can click it, click one of the diamonds and that'll select them all, right click and click copy selected. Next, you can come over to where you want it again and click control or hit, hit control V or right click and paste. As you can see, it's waving, and I really want it to do this one more time, so I want to copy that keyframe, I'm going to paste it there, copy that keyframe, and I'm going to paste it there. So as you can see, he waves a couple times pretty fast, and then I'm going to copy the first one where we started, and I'm going to paste it all the way at the end. So as you can see, we have this little animation, and uh, yeah, that is how you can make this animation work. You can obviously do a lot more detail, but I'm going to stick with that for me. Um, and next, do you want this animation to repeat or not? That is a uh, factor. If you click this little loop icon, it'll loop forever. If you click it once, it'll only play once and be done. 
For this case, I want it to just play once because we really don't want to play our animation more than that many times. So we can just go ahead and leave it at that. Perfect. So uh, next, what we, what, how can we get this animation out there? So what we can do is we can click these three buttons right here. And we're going to click Save. Uh, actually, we're going to click Publish to Roblox. It kind of changed around on me since my last tutorial. It used to say like Export. Um, and we can click Publish to Roblox. But first, you also want to set its animation priority. And basically, you can click one of these. And um, the higher up it is, like Action, it'll ignore other animations like walking and swimming and stuff. And it'll play your animation over it. But if you want your wave to stop when they start walking, like I do, set it to Core. That way, if any other animations start playing, um, it'll stop playing. So you can read more about that if you'd like. Um, I'll leave a link down in the description to a helpful article. Next, uh, you're going to want to click Publish to Roblox. And instead of a model, make sure that it is an animation. Okay. Once you've done that, hit Next. And you can give it a name. I'm going to call it Wave Animation. The next very, very important part is that you select the creator. Now, if this is your own game, then just set it to be me. But if you have this under a group, you're going to click that and you're going to select your group. Otherwise, it will not work, okay? If this game you're making is in a group, make sure the animation is, in, is made by that group. Next, click Submit. And as you can see, we have our animation. So make sure you copy this ID, okay? Make sure you have that copied, because we're going to need that later. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure we save that by inserting an int value inside of replicated storage. So put an int value inside of replicated storage and call this animation ID, and then paste your ID there. Okay, so that is just about it. Uh, but I do want to quickly mention something real quick. If you ever at any time lose your animation, go to roblox.com, click this create button, and then click animations, and you'll be able to find your animation. In this case, it's the wave animation. You can click that, and then you can come up here to this ID right here. See this ID, this number between library and the name? You're going to take that and you're going to copy it, and that is the ID. Okay, so that is it for that part. Next, let's get to the scripting. So we're going to insert a script inside of server script service, and we're going to call this animation handling. Now, there are tons of different ways you can do this uh, handling. Uh, for my situation, I'm going to have it so that whenever the player uh, chats slash wave, it's going to play their animation. So uh, I'm going to quickly script that up. We're just going to, I'm not going to really go over this because um, at this point I am, I'm guessing you have a bit of scripting knowledge. If not, make sure to watch my beginner scripting series I'm working on right now. Um, but you can just follow along. I'm just saying player.chatted colon connect function chat if string dot lower whoops chat uh, equals equals slash wave then so this is basically saying when a player is uh, joined has joined the game whenever they chat if they chat slash wave then we're gonna do this and the first thing is to create an animator. This is brand new since 2021 or whenever I made the last tutorial. An animator is an object. You can see you can actually insert it into the workspace. Uh, whoops, sorry, I'm wrong. You have to insert it into a humanoid, which makes sense. So uh, to do that, you can actually say we can instance one. So we can say local animator equals instance dot new animator. And then we can, be, uh, before that actually, we're going to find their character. So we're going to say local char equals to plr dot character or plr dot character added colon wait so it's gonna wait for their child to be added and now we have that as a variable we can say animator dot parent equals char wait for child humanoid so we're gonna parent this new animator we're gonna put it inside of the player's humanoid that always has to be the case okay the animator always has to be inside of the player's humanoid to work so once it's inside of the humanoid we can uh, create an animation so to help us out with this, I'm going to actually insert an animation inside of the script. Oops, animation. Animation. And I'm going to put it inside of the script. Next, we're going to take our animation ID that we copied earlier, and we're going to paste it into this anima animation ID property. So now we have this animation. I'm going to call it wave. Okay, we're going to rename it. And next, we can say animator. And then last time we had to say humanoid colon load animation. This time it's animator colon load animation. Script clone wait for child wave. So we're going to load a new animation. Actually, let's clone it. So script clone wait for child. Uh, no, we're fine. Ignore that little uh, mistake that I just made. So we're just saying we're going to load this new animation. We're going to load this wave animation to the animator. 
And we also want to store that inside of a variable. So we'll say a local loaded anim equals that. And then whenever you're ready to do it, in my case, it's right as the chat. So I'm just going to do it right now. You can say loaded at al anim colon play with uh, parentheses. And that should be everything. Let's go ahead and hit play. And I'm going to join and I'm going to type slash wave in the chat. And as you can see, I have just done my little animation. And uh, yeah, so I can start waving. And there we go. So that is the animation. And as you can see, I was still walking while I was waving. That's because I didn't set my animation priority to be like action. Okay, uh, so now that we have that code, let me show you how to put it onto an NPC. So we have an NPC right here. We I just duplicated this dummy. And what we're going to do is we're going to open the dum dummy. We're going to go into the humanoid and where we, uh, we can see this animator here. Let's go ahead and insert an animation into it. Okay, and we're going to call this wave once again. We're going to paste that animation ID from earlier there. And let's insert a script into the animator. And we're just going to say while wait one do. Actually, while wait two. So every two seconds. So it'll play the animation. Since the animation is one second long, it'll play the animation, wait a second, and play it again. So we'll say local. We don't need to instance a new animator in this case because we already have one in the NPC. So we can say local loaded anim equals script.parent colon load animation script.parent colon wait for child wave and then we can just say loaded anim colon play and that is it and I'm gonna go ahead and show you by running that that is all we have to do to make this and as you can see our little dummy is um, doing our animation just fine and that is how to animate in 2023 onward uh, this should work in future years besides 2023 if it doesn't i'll make sure to let you guys know uh so yeah thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed it please do subscribe i'd really appreciate the subscription uh from you guys i am making tons of different new tutorials uh to help you guys out so that is it if you have any questions let me know in the comments or join my discord server either way works i'll try to respond to you as quick as i can thank you for watching and i'll see you in a future video